buyers from the spires, the needy from the greedy, and those who trust me from the ones who don't. Because if you can't see value here today, you're not up here shopping, you're up here shoplifting. <laughs> you see these goods, never seen daylight, moonlight, Israelite, fanny by the gaslight. Take a bag, come on, take a bag. I took a bag home last night, because me a lot more than ten pound, I can tell you. <laughs> Anyone like jewellery? Look at that one there. Handmade in Italy, hand stolen in Stepney. It's as long as my arm, I wish it was as long as something else. <laughs> Don't think because these boxes are sealed up, they're empty. The only man who sells empty boxes is The Undertaker. And by the look of some of you lot here today, I make more money with me measuring tape. Here, one price, ten pounds. Did you say ten pounds? Are you deaf? That's a bargain, I'll take one. Squeeze in if you can, left leg, right leg, your body will follow. They call it walking. You want one as well, darling? You do, that's it, they're waking up. Treat the wife, treat somebody else's wife. It's a lot more fun if you don't get caught. <laughs> Hold on, you want one as well? OK, darling, show me a bit of life then. It's no good standing out there like one o'clock half struck. Buy them, you better buy them. These are not stolen. They just haven't been paid for them. You can't get them again. They've changed the bloody locks here. What for you? No good right. coming back later when I've sold stuck. out. Too late, too late will be the cry when the man with the bargains has passed I'll throw one of these telephones if you like, but it does not include the amp. Very nice. I hope it includes the speakers. It doesn't include the speakers. It doesn't include the amp. And it's not supposed to include me getting the amp of your stupid questions. Now you want it, Nick. You buy it. What else do I get with it? You get a gold-plated Rolls-Royce, as long as you pay for it. Don't know, Tom. Seems expensive. Seems. Well, this seems to be a waste of my time. That is 900 nicker in any shop you're lucky enough to find one in, and you're complaining about 200. What school of finance did you study? It's a deal. It's a steal. It's sale of the fucking century. In fact, fuck it, Nick, I think I'll keep it. All right, all right, keep your Allens on. It's a ton. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ, you could choke a dozen donkeys on that. And you're haggling over 100 pound? What do you do when you're not buying stereos, Nick? Finance revolutions? 100 pounds is still 100 pounds. Not when the price is 200 pounds, it's not. And certainly not when you've got Liberia's deficit in your skyrocket. Tighten than a duck's butt you are. Now, come on. Let me feel the fibre of your fabric. Uh, security? That's right. That's right, security. So what's the point in having it if we're not going to fucking use it? Well, I would have used it, Winston, but this is Willie. And Willie lives here. Yes, Charles, but you didn't know it was Willie until you opened the door, did you? Chill, Winston. It's me. Charlie knows it's me. What's the problem? <laughs> the problem is, Willie, that Charles and yourself are not the quickest of cats at the best of times, so just do as I say and keep the fucking cage locked! What is that? That's Gloria. Yes, I know that's Gloria. What's that? Uh, fertilizer. You went out six hours ago to buy a money counter and you come back with a semi-conscious Gloria and a bag of fertiliser. Alarm bells are ringing, Willie. Uh, we need fertiliser, Winston. Mm -hmm. We also need a money counter. This money's got to be out by Thursday. I'm buggered if I'm going to count it. Oh, and um, if you do have to buy sodding fertiliser, could you just be a little more subtle? What do you mean? We grow copious amounts of ganja, yeah? Yeah. And you're carrying a wasted girl and a bag of fertiliser. You don't look like your average hoarder fucking culture. What sort of pub is this, then? Is this a Moen pub? What's that? It's a cocktail. You asked for a cocktail? No. I asked you to give me a refreshing drink. I wasn't expecting a fucking rainforest. You could fall in love with Don't. an orangutan in Don't. there. Phil, it's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Is this supposed to be symbolic? Apparently it's for security. Yeah? I'd have bought me gloves if I'd have known. You must be Eddie, JD's son. You must be Harry. Sorry, didn't know your father. Never mind, son. You just might meet him if you carry on like that.
So how long do you have to wait till you see a return? Probably no more than four weeks. A month? So what fucking good is that if we need it in six? No, five days. Well, it's still a good idea. Think to do it for you, Nick. But if it is what he says it is, I'll take it off him for three and a half grand a key. That is if it is what he says it is. I don't want to see it after a sample. I don't want to touch it after a sample. I'll leave you in the capable hands of Nathan here. He'll sort out the details. But just let me tell you one thing. If the milk turns out to be sour, I ain't the kind of pussy to drink it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Rory? Yeah, I know Rory. He's not to be underestimated. He's a funny looking fucker, I know. But you've got to look past the hair and the cute cuddly thing. It's all a deceptive facade. A few nights ago, Rory's Roger Iron rusted. So he's gone down the battle cruiser to watch the end of a football game. No one's watching the custard, so he switches the channel over. A fat geezer's north opens, and he wanders up and turns the lizer over. Now fuck off and watch it somewhere else. Rory knows Claret is imminent, but he doesn't want to miss the end of the game. So calm as a coma, picks up a fire extinguisher, walks straight past the jam rolls we're ready for action, and plonks it outside the entrance. He then orders an Aristotle of the most ping-pong tiddly in the nuclear sub and switches back to his footer. That's fucking it, says the geezer. That's fucking what, says Rory. And he gobs out a mouthful of booze covering fatty. He flicks a flaming match into his bird's nest and the geezer's lit up like a leaking gas pipe. Rory, unfazed, turns back to his game. His team's won too. Four nil. Your stupidity might be your one saving grace. Huh? Don't err me, Greek boy. How is it your fucking stupid, soon-to-be-dead friends thought that they might be able to steal my cannabis and then sell it back to me? Is this a declaration of war? Is this some white cunts joke that black cunts don't get? Because I'm not fucking laughing, Nicholas. I know you couldn't have known my position, because you're not that stupid that if you did, you wouldn't have turned up here scratching your ass with that what's going on here look slapped all over your Chevy Chase. But what you do know is where these people live. If you hold back anything, I'll kill you. If you bend the truth, or I think you're bending the truth, I'll kill you. If you forget anything, I'll kill you. In fact, you're going to have to work very hard to stay alive, Nick. Now, do you understand everything I've said? Because if you don't, I'll kill you. 